Sports. We are continuing our week-long series, Bloomberg West Top 5. For today's Top 5, let's head back out to Bloomberg West editor-at-large, Corey Johnson. Corey. Yeah, John, well, today we're looking ahead to the stories you might want to be watching, not for the year looking back, but for the year looking forward in 2012. Joining us from Stanford University in Palo Alto with his Top 5 important stories for next year. Vivek Wadwa, Vivek's a columnist for Bloomberg Business Week and the Washington Post and Vice President of Academics and Innovation at Singular University. Vivek, welcome back. All right, so number five, what do you got? Social media? Well, social media, I mean, um, you know, all of last year we talked about location-based uh, services. This year everyone was obsessed with social media. Look at what happened to location, it became a feature. The same thing is going to happen to social. Uh, Facebook is hot, but Facebook has become a platform. It's like the internet itself. You know, our, uh, here in Silicon Valley, VCs have invested in hundreds and hundreds of Me Too social media startups. Any, anyone who call themselves social media got money. Well, guess what? The party's over. That bubble's going to burst. The vast majority of these companies that got funded are going to go out of business. That's the sad news really? about social Wait, media. Really? So you think next year social media goes from sizzle to fizzle? Yes, exactly. I, I'm, I'm no. trying out my new career as a rapper. I thought I'd try that out, Vivek. No, seriously, why? I mean, social media is such an impressive concept of, of, of the realization of computing and networking and, and uh, uh, the penetration to so many people. Why would that just go away like that? It's not going away, Corey. That's the, that's the thing. What I'm saying is it'll become, you know, like the Internet. We were so excited about e-commerce and the Internet itself, right? We took it for granted. We started moving on to the next platform. Social media is the same. Social media is now a feature. It's the way we use the Internet. Facebook has become a platform like Windows is. I mean, Google, in fact, Android has become a platform. So Facebook has become a, a, a something to build on. But this whole concept of trying to build, you know, Facebook clones, Twitter clones, all these silly apps, that's not going to be hard anymore. We're going to be going on to the next bubble. Or we're jumping on the next bandwagon. There'll be more exciting things happening in 2012. It's a reason to look forward, not backwards. Prediction number four. You're predicting the bubble will pop for the current crop of tech IPOs? Right. Well, you know, I love LinkedIn. Uh, Zynga, I'm not sure about their business model, but uh, my prediction is that their stock value is going to be at least half of what it is today. And, and these other companies that went out, the Zillows and the Pandoras, they'll be decimated further. And the biggest uh, uh, bubble of all, Groupon, uh, I'll bet you that uh, it's uh, worth practically nothing within a year, year and a half at the most, simply because there's no business model over there. Yeah, they're buying companies left, right, and center, but how many irrelevant companies can you buy? So that, I mean, like I said, LinkedIn and Zynga, um, there might still be some momentum there, but not at the $6 billion valuations. LinkedIn is a great billion-dollar company, a great $2 billion company. But, you know, the prices are, have been way out of whack with reality over the last year or so. Now, you know, another big trend we've covered a lot in the last year, you know, we launched the show on February 28th, and, and one of the driving forces of the show is the mobile computing and the tablet. What do you think is going to happen with the right. tablet in the next year? I think this is when the explosive, explosive growth is going to happen. Um, you know, Kindle Fire, $200, look at the sensation it created. The HP, when they discontinued their $400 tablet, they cut down to $99, there was a frenzy. Everyone wanted to buy every tablet that was left because the magic price point was $99. Now, here's something remarkable that's happening. This device over here is from India. Guess what they're selling it for? $35. It runs Come Android. On. It plays movies. Thirty-five it, bucks. It has a is that thirty-five bucks somehow? is what they're going. It's subsidized by about fifteen dollars or so. The cost of production, I think, is about thirty bucks or so. Um, the retail price will be sixty dollars in India. In volume, you're down to about fifty dollars or so. Now, imagine if this technology comes to the United States. This, the, the fire this will create. You know, at Singularity University, wow. um, we're ordering a hundred of these so we can give one to each of our students so they can interact with the professors as they teach. Imagine going to your local restaurant. At 50 bucks, you know, you'd have the way they would give you a tablet with the menu on it. You click on the uh, video and it shows you how the food is made. I mean, so many possibilities open up for these devices. They're going to be everywhere once the price drops. And what's more, Wild. once the price gets in, in, in the uh, in hundred something dollar range, you can now subsidize uh, the, the carriers can uh, charge you ten, fifteen dollars a month and give you a free tablet. Or the tablet, yeah, they can yeah. come and bundle in the tablet for ten dollars a month. You get a free device. Imagine what happens right. when you do that. Two thousand three. I can't imagine. I can't imagine what the next two are. But we're gonna have more of the Vic. What? The uh, Vic. What do you got for number two? Well, first of all, um, you know, I, I talked about the uh, tablet. It's made by a Canadian company called DataWind. In, on this side of the world, we've had uh, Apple 
Steve Jobs, he revolutionized the way we use computers with the, user, with the UI and with the mouse. Before he passed away, he changed the world one more time by introducing Siri. People don't realize the impact Siri is going to make. For the first time, we can talk to our computers. And Siri is pretty smart. She talks back very intelligently. Well, voice recognition is now going to enter the mainstream. Wait till Apple releases the Apple TV, the new iPads, and uh, the new devices that are powered by, uh, by you know, Siri and voice recognition. And Google gets into the act and starts doing it. Apple will open up the APIs, most likely by the end of the year. And now you've got the beginning of the voice revolution. We're talking about, you know, you've, uh, well, you and I are both old enough to have watched Star Trek. Right, where, where uh, Scotty would just talk to the computer, and um, uh, the computer would understand commands. That's now a reality. In 2002, we're going to see vo uh, voice recognition entering the mainstream, changing the way we interact with our computers in a very big way. Well, and I think you've seen a company, Vivek, uh, Nuance, which is a part of that. It's not part of Apple, but a company that uh, Apple's using to do some of that voice recognition has seen a, a exactly. big gain in its stock price, and, and uh, our revenues also have uh, continued to pace. That's the future. That, hopefully, that's the next bubble. <laughs> The next year, you're looking forward to another bubble already. You're predicting the future so you can I want many more the bubbles. The 2013 right. bubble. I can see you getting ready for that. Right, right. right I so, love bubbles. Uh, finally, uh, your last one. Explain this to me. Cloudburst? What's that? Well, um, you know, everyone talks about cloud computing. We're moving everything to the cloud. We're moving to the cloud in a very big way. And it makes a lot of sense because the price of hardware is dropping dramatically. The cost of connectivity is dropping dramatically. So it makes a lot of sense to start putting things on the cloud. But while we do this, the hackers are feasting. The Chinese are feasting. I mean, uh, the U.S. for the Chinese is like an all-you-can-steal buffet. That they penetrated our systems and, and they've been uh, robbing us blind. And so have the hackers. The problem is that we haven't upgraded our security infrastructure enough. What happens if this infrastructure fail and, and a number of businesses, small businesses, have moved all of their data to the cloud and they're out of business for days. They lose their servers. They lose their data. It'll just take one or two incidents like that, a 9-11, a digital 9-11, and suddenly this entire cloud industry uh, goes, into a, goes into turmoil. All the momentum we've been building up in, in going to the cloud, suddenly we start having, start having second uh, thoughts about it. Now, predicting the cloud burst, as I call it, is like predicting the San Francisco earthquake. You know that the fundamentals uh, are there for a problem. I don't know if it's 2012, 2013, but I have no doubt that we're going to have some disasters brewing with cloud computing because the security but infrastructure Vivek, has not evolved fast enough. Isn't this transformation to the cloud sort of a one-way change? We can never really go back because the basic infrastructure of computing is, is changing to be permanently on the cloud, even though there are great security risks and there may be indeed a, a great security breakthrough breakdown? Yeah, the, the problem is we've been so uh, euphoric about the cloud and all the great things it can do and not uh, focused enough on security. I think we're going to have a wake-up call before you know it, and that's what really worries me, that, that uh, you know, the next, the next bubble really could be, a big, uh, could be the cloud or big data. You, you never know which one of these is going to pop first, but the, but the point is that there's a lot of good stuff happening there. All it's going to do is to take one or two failures for, uh, the, for uh, a wet towel to be thrown over all this momentum and the industry be, to be in, uh, in, in turmoil. It could happen any time, and, and, and that's what I worry about. Well, uh, looking at the past, it's easy. Looking forward to the future, a lot harder. Vivek Wadwell, lucky to have you doing that for us. We'll, we'll check back in a year and see how, how right you were. Vivek Wadwell of... Uh, yeah, I hope Uber, I don't look like a fool. As well as, <laughs> yes, indeed, and Washington Post, lots of other things. Thanks a lot, Vivek.